Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> I was in the land of overthinkers. Hey guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing? I still have pocket prep up because I'm still working on this E&M document. I only have about 50 more pages to go through to finish this uh, guide to E&M practice questions. Um, so I thought you guys could work on the pocket prep questions that I have not audited yet and see what you guys think is the correct answer for these while I work on these this document and then of course answer y'all's questions if you have any how's everybody doing tonight hey Haley hey beauty hey Tracy hey Yolanda hey DK hey Tammy thank you for the rose you're awesome You can turn your TikTok uh, live stream to landscape so you can see the questions better too. Because I'm actually running this on my desktop computer right now. Hey, Hurley. How's it going? Can't watch. That's Do y'all know what the answer is to this question? And do y'all have any questions for me tonight? I do have a new question for today up on the YouTube community tab in case any of you guys are on the YouTube account. I just posted a question. You like it? I'm so glad you like it, Stephanie. Um, it's not 100%, but even AAPC, their own questions, we do find a couple of errors from time to time. So um, if you find any errors, let me know. And um, I have a contact there and I can get the questions fixed, but it's rare, but it does happen, especially when guidelines change. It's so hard to keep things 100% in you know 750 questions and to keep every single one of them up to date with 2024 guidelines um, is rough so but it's a great tool you can use it um, the app on your phone and you can do questions you know on your breaks in grocery lines I love it and plus I like the idea of having the page numbers of where the answers are um, it helped me also figure out where they were picking out um, where to pick out 
types of questions. So it's cool. You just have to have the exact books that they use and they only use the AAPC, ICD-10, and HitPix book. Of course, the CPT is universal, but um, you just have to make sure you're in the current year that they're talking about. Sometimes their page numbers are wrong too, but um, not everything is 100%. I mean, everybody makes errors. I do too. Um, I remember reading Alice in the Wonderland the first time, and there's a typo error in it where the line is repeated when it shouldn't be and you know every single document that's ever printed or made there's some sort of error in it because we've got humans making them right so we're all fallible but for the price $36 for three months access of 750 questions with rationales and page numbers written in the same format as AAPC you can't get a better deal and there is a um, sponsorship program that um, you can apply for and try to get three months free. There's also a pass guarantee. If you don't pass your certification exam, you can let them know. And if you did pre-purchase the three-month program with them, they'll give you another three months for free access. So, pretty cool deal. I just haven't audited all their questions yet. These are the 250 new ones that I haven't audited, so I wanted y'all's help while I'm doing something else. Oh good, I'm so glad you got um, into the YouTube channel. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing the live, Evie. That's awesome. Thanks for the follow, Jenny. My name is Jenny Lynn, too. Jennifer Lynn, but still, that's what my dad named me. I think it's the only fight he ever won with my mom. It's called PocketPrep.com. It's a website, but there's also an app for it. Yes, the exam layout is very similar to AAPC. It's in the exact same format. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not getting paid for this. This is just my own observations. I bought every single Amazon book, every single exam question you can buy over the internet that anyone is selling. And my only recommendations is to buy them directly from AAPC if you're doing their certification or a HEMA and then also um, pocket prep is pretty good and then um, CCO or COO whatever that other tutoring company is they have three practice exams they give you like nine months access for like 35 bucks or something the last time I looked it's been a year or more I haven't looked recently but um, they have some practice exam questions that are in the AAPC format too that I would recommend I'm not really good at um, dividing all my videos up as far as ICD-10 and putting them in the correct headers. Um, so I probably got more than you think, but just because I didn't put them in the correct category, there's 14 in the ambulatory surgery, which are ICD-10 overview. There's also, um, of course, the 12 videos in the ICD-10 category. Um, the COC practice, the 2023 ICD-10 intro is a video where I do all the first 10 pages of the guidelines video 
Um, and then all my workshops um, all include ICD-10 questions in them, including the duck classes. I have 15 videos underneath the ICD-10 book prep videos, which is an additional set of videos. All the advanced duck classes, there's 28 videos there, will all have ICD-10 questions in them. All the workshops, there's, um, how many do I have in there? Like 20 workshops posted. Those all have 75 questions or so in them each, and they'll have ICD-10 questions in them too. Um, all the TikTok replays and all the live video replays, there's 500 or so videos of those. We'll have ICD-10 in them, but you have to hunt and find them, of course. Um, I'm not a full-time content creator. I do have the full-time job and I'm just as I'm home from work and without the kids running around I try to record some videos and help you guys out but I didn't professionally do all this stuff like I should and as far as posting it and organizing it I just threw videos out there so I'm sorry there are a ton of ICD videos but I probably just don't have them labeled right I need to hire someone to go through all my videos, chop them up and organize them and put them in here, but they charge $500 to do a three hour video. Well, I have 700 videos and most of them are two to three hours long, so I, I couldn't even begin to afford to pay for a video person to fix all my mess here, but <laughs> that would be awesome if somebody could go through all my videos and crop each question and then organize it by which book or guideline it was that would be amazing that would be a wonderful tool for everybody but yeah it's just me just some lady on the internet trying to help you guys out and uh, posting all the videos I can as I make them in whatever format they happen to be in I hope y'all are, I hope you're hearing stuff. Check your, um, check to see if audio, if your audio is running to Bluetooth device, like headphones. <laughs> it is, it's a lot of money. Even if you buy there's like some apps being developed now that you can download your video into and it's it'll AI generate and chop up your video and rename them and stuff. It's still super expensive and there's limits. I've paid for one so far and I've already spent $500 for a year on this and I thought it was going to do all my videos but it ended up only doing um, a limited amount. Um, because I've already had to upgrade and then my subscription is of course I bought the highest and for a whole year's access for this thing and then as I got into it and I had 20 videos done um, then they wanted me to upgrade some more and I just had to upgrade and do another $200 to get access for them to up do up <laughs> updo some more videos oh my gosh and what's the name of this thing what is it oh I think I'm on the wrong let me see what it's called um, speechify speechify website I bought their highest, most expensive thing, whatever it was, it was close to $300, and it does, it's an AI studio for all-in-one video shop, and as soon as, you know, I got 20 videos in, then it decided, oh, well, you got to pay more, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, what? But anyway, I'm like, whatever it is, I just need something bigger, you know, because my videos are just so long, 
but I don't know. Anyway, does anybody got an answer for this one? Thank you about the CPT questions or the videos are a lifesaver. That's awesome. Oh, thanks for tapping the screen. Yes, yes, yes. And Sharon. Anointed. Thank you for the flower bouquet and the little the little Valentine chicky D's. Those are so cute. Tater. The flower and the taters. Those are so cute. We have some B's and C's. Let's see. What are we doing? We're removing a benign lesion. So you know you should be where. Where do benign lesions go? If y'all been listening to me any at all. <laughs> but it could be. I don't know what the 1300s are. I don't know them off the top of my head. Let's go look. What was going on in the, is, are those just repairs? Aren't they just repairs? A patient, dermatologist arm, blah, 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 shaving. Ah. It is shaving. That might be 13 because this isn't like a scalpel excision, right? This is just a shave. Let's see. 13s, 113s, 113s, 113s. 113s are shavings. Yep, headers. The 113s are under the header shaving of epidermal and dermal lesions. If you go look at 114, your heading is excision of benign lesions. And then, of course, your header for 116s is excisions of malignant lesions. So, benign lesion does automatically get you to the 14 but how did they remove it did they use a scalpel and use sutures or did they use a curette or a scraping device and that would probably make the, di the difference it is the 13 do you guys see the differences in that CPT book you got to clear your headers before your descriptors. Uh, 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 that was a good question. Because my first thought, thinking about the um, benign lesion, does lead you to 14, but your headers. 114s are benign lesion. 116s are malignant lesions, but your header for the 113s is shaving. And that's what you did today was shaving. So just looking at those headers made that difference right there. So not only did you have to know it was benign or malignant, but you also needed to make sure you verified how you removed the lesion. <laughs> Thanks for the follow canes. Yes, I have a video about the root operations of PCS that goes into much better detail than I could ever. Um, it's one of those videos that I use Speechify to help me with because I could not have done that. Um, where's my video? my videos. I'm trying to get you the link to it real quick. Let's see. It's really good video. Um, P. 
And don't forget about my Discord group because Let me get through this question and let y'all see the next question. So this one, we're doing um, left lower lid. What do you guys think the answer is for this one while I am looking for her video? POA indicators. In my Discord group, which is a free study group, it's an app on your phone. You're going to have access to a practice exam room called CCS and CCA practice exam questions. I have tons of POS practice exam questions posted in here. You just got to scroll backwards two years worth of uh, info. You can also do a little search for whatever kind of question you're looking for but I've got tons of information in here posted and other people do too but I do actual practice questions in here with those codes <clears throat> and I'm sure I posted my video in here there's some answers I love that workbook too that workbook is really good I use it for a lot of the practice exam questions but you'll see we'll have practice exam questions with rationale in there. So our Discord study group is super cool. Lenectomies, those are the worst. Here it is. This video is awesome. Medicine. This It's a video called The Introduction PCS Medical Coding Certification CCS CCA. That's the link. I just posted it in the in the TikTok, but I don't know if it'll show up um, for you guys to see it. It is a 30-minute video. And it has my blue logo on it. 
It was posted on December 31st, 2023. And it does the best job ever in explaining um, PCS for sure. All right, you guys, on this question, thanks, anointed. I recommend AAPC to get your certification just because there's no prerequisites, no school required. Plus you get two attempts at passing the exam for the one price and employers will hire you for that certification more than any other certification out there. So no matter what school, they could care less whether you go to Penn Foster or Harvard University, it doesn't matter. All they want is an AAPC certification or a HEMA CCS certification. Those are the only ones that are employers are looking for. So um, I recommend AAPC and I do not recommend going to school and I've got three pinned TikTok videos that tell you where to start and a lot of my TikTok videos show you all the services that I offer. I teach for free from the certification exam point of view um, the fastest and most efficient way possible just to help you guys out so that you guys can start a new career and better your life. I'm just here to help. So. A lot of people saying D on this one, so let's see. Good job, you got it right. Perfect. What do you guys think the answer is on this one? If I missed um, your question, just ask again. I'm working on another document here for just a second. What's this one? This one's new patient. Hey, mommy. What? Sorry to interrupt your life. So, do you have a bigger pillowcase for my pillow? Probably. I just have to find one. I'm just not going to find it right now. Give me a minute. Love you. Take your time. I was just wondering. Okay. Kid needs a pillowcase.
also What do you guys think is the answer to this one? D? Hey Esther. I got one D. Hey Marie. Got two D's, three D's, four D's. Perfect. Good job. What about this one? When should we use an unspecified code? Ooh, I like that question. Doris, thank you for the roses. Yolanda, thank you for the roses. Go Kart, thank you for the roses. Anointed, of course, love the little tater and the flowers. Those are amazing. Tasha, thank you for the roses. Tammy, thank you for the roses. You guys are awesome. Everybody saying B, when information in the medical record is insufficient. Perfect. Good job. And when the doctors gives you too much information you do the non non-specified what about this one I see a bunch of um, modifier 51's attached to a lot of the answers so one of them does not have a modifier think about that when you're doing this question hey twinkle good to see you Ah, uh, no worries, go kart. Just to be able to email you, you guys, it is insane. Like if I want to email you guys on my website to tell y'all when I have a like a workshop and stuff, I only know this today is because it's time to renew it. Um, you don't even want to know what they charge just to be able to email people. <laughs> It was $641 last year. It's time to renew that again. Isn't that insane? Every little piece of anything that is done, of course, somebody's got their hand open and it can't get done unless you pay the piper. And it doesn't bother me any. It's just the whole institution of being able to teach and being able to give your information freely and help people can't be done by a lot of people um, unless they keep their full-time jobs and you know it's rough and I think that 
education and health care are two things that should be completely free for everybody. If you know something and you can help people, then teach them if you can. And then if somebody's sick and we have a medicine that will cure them or make their life better, we should cure them. That's just the basics of being a human on this planet. I don't know. They don't make it easy for sure. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? <laughs> yeah, the charges are crazy. Hmm. <laughs> We are the wizards of our own little planet and government. I don't know why <laughs> we have to make things so difficult. We're wizards. We're the human species on the planet. We can do anything we wanted. If we wanted to treat people for free, we could. If we wanted to give out free education, if a, a kid wants to be an astronaut or a doctor or a physicist, we should support them and send them as wizards of this planet <laughs> and let them go get that education if they want to. It just, we should support them. Then we'd have more scientists, more explorers, more physicists. We'd have more wizard tools to help the planet. I don't, I don't understand why we make things so difficult on ourselves. It's, it's ridiculous. But <laughs> we can do anything we want. We, we are human beings. You can't say there's got to be rules and regulations and fines and fees and what? What? Just do it. We got a C for this one. Are we the three three two four four three three two two oh three three two four one or the three three two three six? Check out your headers, see if there's any differences. We are dealing with a defibrillator, but what did we do? What was the whole purpose of why the patient was here? That should definitely get you to the correct answer. I was watching a documentary where one theory was put out there that, you know, back in the old days when we were building the train system across the United States to deliver goods to cities, you know, the government and stuff was footing the bill for all this to help out and get goods across the United States, of course, to put in the train system. Well, they decided, whoever it is, let's put this back into uh, the citizens' hands and just build roads and then they have to have the cars to transport goods across the United States. they Let's let them support all this. That's why we don't have mass transit like other countries. Like you can go to Japan or um, anywhere else on the planet and there's public transportation where you can go from one side of the country to the other without owning a vehicle. But the United States decided not to do that just because they didn't want to pay for the infrastructure. They wanted to put it on all of us, and that's why they force us all to buy cars. And <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, who thinks of these kind of things when they're building countries and lays down foundations like that? My goodness. <laughs> We did change a battery. All right. 
It was A, the one without the modifier. A lot of times these questions look for the one that's different from all the other ones. All the other ones had three codes in it. If you're only changing a battery, do you really need three procedures coded? And do you have to have that 51 modifier? Yeah. It's just the one without the bat without all the modifiers. This is an infection of a pump, and we're just going to remove that pump that was infected. What would be the correct answer for this one? I do. All those little hearts, thank you anointed, and um, the love tags, thank you Jess, thank you anointed, thank you Angel, thank you Kelly, thank you Doris, Yolanda, everybody. All those little coins, TikTok will deposit into my PayPal once a month. It's usually about 40 bucks, somewhere around there with the subscription money and I give away YouTube subscriptions for those. I have exclusive videos that are only available if you pay the $4.99 a month for my YouTube content and that's what I use the TikTok money for. I give away at least 10 of those twice a week, 20 of those. Um, I give away a lot more than I get back but that's the fun part of teaching is, is the, the giving back and so yeah I give away a ton of YouTube subscriptions. I want everybody to at least see the, have access to the exclusive videos at least for one month, even if they never um, are able to s subscribe to it. They eventually just win a subscription and get access to it, and then that way they can watch those videos before they take their certification exam because they're cool videos. All right, I'm looking for subsequent consultation. Where's that definition? <sighs> Not there. While you guys work on this question, what do you guys think the answer is to that one? We are multitasking today. Tomorrow we'll do practice exam questions. We'll be live on YouTube. We'll do two hours, 6.30 Arizona time zone. The kids do not have any practices this week, and the dance isn't on Valentine's Day. It's next Friday, so it won't affect any of my lessons. So we should be right on time tomorrow. I already got the links up on the YouTube channel for Tuesdays and Thursdays live lessons where we'll do individual practice exam questions in a more professional setting where I'll show you more of the book, how I got the answers. There'll be questions that I wrote or others and I'll explain why the answers are what they are better than today. Today is just kind of bonus. I'm supposed to be doing book prep video, but I'm trying to get done with this E&M document. I'm getting there. All right. No, nope, it's not going to be there.
says page eight. Why do I have page eight? Is that the right page number? Probably not. Last year it was on page eight. Mm. This year it's on page nine. All right, what did y'all come up with this one? D, you really need the book prep? We can do some book prep. C is the correct answer for this one. This one we needed the two CPT codes with the 51 modifier. Those two codes and what's your differences between the 62360? Whoops. Knocked over my hair. Pick that back up. Oh. 623. 60. And 65. What's our differences? So, our 60 is an implantation, our 65 is a removal. What did we do today? We were removing it, right? I remember saying that. That's what we were here for, was to remove it. So you only needed to look up the first word in each code descriptor and see that you just did the removal. There's your next one. Y'all work on this one. In Arizona, yes, yes, yes. You have 50 practice questions from AAPC, that's awesome. I recommend getting exams A, B, C, D, E, and F. They have six of them to start out with for sure. Thanks, Kelly, for the roses. Thanks, Go Kart, for the roses. Thanks, Anointed, for all the puffy hearts. Those are my favorite. I like those. And the love tag. Jess, thanks for the puffy heart also. Angel for the roses. Kelly for the roses. Doris for the roses. Yolanda for the roses. Anointed with the taters and the flowers. Go Kart for more roses. Anointed, more puffies. And Tasha for roses and Tammy for roses. Thank y'all for sharing the live and commenting. You took test A and it was so overwhelming. Yeah, it is. It will get better. Be sure to go look up each incorrect answer. Go look at that CPT code descriptor or the parentheticals that are under it and see why that answer would be incorrect. It's really good I know a lot of people like to look at the correct answer and then look at that with the question but I find it also helpful to go look at the incorrect answers and see why they're incorrect super helpful would we be one code by itself 
Would we have a modifier with this situation? Would we be two codes? Would we be in the nervous system or would we be in the medicine section? Those are all questions that need to be answered with this question. I follow back everybody that is gifters, of course, subscribers, um, and even the people that just watch the whole two hours. I follow you back. So I like seeing you guys' TikTok content too. So don't be surprised if you see me following you guys. Even if your TikTok content is about cats, I'll still watch it. I like all of it. TikTok's a fun platform. Come on. And if by chance you do get a copy of my notes, a lot of it um, seems to overwhelm a lot of people, but the main thing that you need is just the one word differences in between. I like to highlight or add extra information. You don't have to write all of this extra stuff, but that one word differences is what you need for those exam questions. That is super helpful. And then I fill it up with a bunch of other information, but it's all helpful. Just don't get overwhelmed. And be sure and watch my lives on YouTube if you do happen to purchase any notes because the lives do help explain what's going on in those notes too. But for this question, I see we're intra. There's a lot of codes that are either intra, infra, or extra. I just put those words in chat. Get you a color coding scheme like a highlighter. Use pink, blue, and green, and then find every CPT code that has the word intra before a word, and color code that one color. And that way, every time you see something, you'll remember there's a difference in these codes, because some of them are gonna be intra, some of them are gonna be extra, some of them are gonna be infra. And I have to make sure, first thing, if I'm in these codes, that I fix or pick that particular thing first. Am I on top, below, or in the middle is exactly what all that means. But it is super helpful to get to a section and know exactly what you've got to clear to pick the correct answers. And this is one of those areas. We've got C, somebody says C. It was B. What's our differences? Let's go look. 62362. 62 is an implant and a replace. 65 is just a removal. 50 is an implant revised and repositioned. It's also one that is tunneled. It is intra but that's the catheter. What did we do today? We did a uh, drug delivery system. R50 is long-term medication.
but 60 has the reservoir pump where 50 has an external pump or implantable um, very good question because these two codes are very similar one is called medication and the other one is called drug infusion one main key term there meds versus drugs They're in accord. That's what they claim they are at, is if they're in the spinal cord, it's only the 61 and 62. Fifty has no pump, but you can see inside the CPT code descriptor, it says it includes the administration or external pump or implantable reservoir infusion pump. Why does it say that inside that CPT code descriptor? But here, these people, pocket preppy people right there, are saying that not the pump <laughs> but it says it in the CPT code descriptor it's funny sometimes their descriptions aren't the best but it's a good question Two surgeons, if there's two surgeons, they're using that 62 uh, modifier, but they're using 58 here because it's a staged procedure. Because she had it done six weeks after, so it's staged. It is. This one is confusing. The main term the main term guys on these two let me show you on the camera um, I have to go back to the screen 50 is a pump 62 is a reservoir. This does have the word reservoir in it, but they're talking about the pump. They're not talking about a reservoir of medication. This this doesn't have a pump in there. Pump. This one's meds, this one's drugs, this one's reservoirs, this one's pump. Our question said reservoir and then programmable. Our question said oh, reservoir. 
has a reservoir and it said programmable. Just this one sentence is all we needed right there to pick out the answer. All right, next one. When can a physician report arthroscopic joint, is what that means, removal of one or more loose or foreign bodies? Which one is the correct answer? Hey Fatima, how are you doing? Good to see you. They're playing around with these pocket prep questions right now while I'm working on an E&M document. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? We got D. When removal of loose body may be reported only when they are smaller than the diameter of the cannula. Loose reported when there's no restrictions on the removal or when their loose form body may be reported only when it's more than five millimeters. As They put that in the A. I I wonder if that's going to be in the It's going to be in the Hip Hicks book, huh? The guideline for that. I bet. The only guideline I know of is about stents in the billinary pancreas duct that to be done during the same session, but Hmm. I've not even opened my 2024 hit picks book. I need to. Hmm. 
don't see anything in hip picks either. Maybe. The only thing they've got in the appendix 100 publications with foreign is coverage for foreign hospitalizations on an emergency basis when you're out of the country. So, don't know. What did you guys think the answer was? Page 202. Got B's and D's. GW is a TikTok subscriber. Thank you so much. Let's pick her answer. See if she's right. D is correct. Good job. It does say in the 2023 book. I don't know about the 2024. It might be that 200 page. We've got an answer there. Oh my goodness. Gotta go look. That's what I like pocket prep for is giving you the page numbers of where some answers are. <laughs> what? Where is this located? Oh, not there. Let's see, 196 in the 2023 book then. Casting splints, arthroscopic, ah, loose foreign bodies, foreign body removals may be reported when loose bodies or foreign bodies is equal to or larger than the diameter of the cannula used in the procedure. Nice. 197 actually in the 2023 book and 202, like she said, in the 2024 book. So this, sometimes they get, you know, the page numbers close. <laughs> close enough. It's 197. I don't recommend any books. I recommend you following me and watching my lives. Um, I'll let you know what, what, terms you need to know for your medical coding exam. Which exam are you taking? If you're taking CPC, let's see, where is my camera again? Um, the ICD-10 book gives you all the anatomy you could ever need. Oh my gosh, way more than you need for sure. Remember that before you code any section, your ICD-10 book will have an anatomy section right before you code it that will tell you all about the structures of the body part they're, you're fixing to work in and list all the diseases that are going to happen in that area too. like how they moved all the darn guidelines around and put them in front of all this mess. So, like your whole digestive system is explained and told about every single body part and what its function is and then you have the common diseases in it. This is all the anatomy you need for your exam is what's in here. Even your before you code, you've got full descriptions and labels of tons of body parts inside here. There is just a wealth of information in here. All you need is your ICD-10. Um, if you're going to take AAPC, 
Um, JVD is something you should know what that means. Um, you should know the differences between simple and intermediate closures. You need to know Your differences in your modifiers like TC, PC, all those good things, super helpful. 76, definitions of L-U-N-U-L-A, the Warthons tumor, O-S, meaning cervix, phalanges, what connects bone to bone, Parts of the shoulder, parts of the knee, those kinds of things are often on the exam. Things that you should know. But that ICD-10 book is just full of info. Her anatomy. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? We have which CPT code would be reportable with the 51 modifier? Do you know you can go run to an appendix in the back of the book and look the answer up for this one super fast and easy peasy? CPC cost, I don't know, $500 to take the exam. You need a membership. You need to buy the study guide. And you need to buy the practice exam questions. And then you get two attempts at taking the certification exam with your exam attempt price. And you need your three books, your CPT, your ICD-10 and your hit picks, but that's the fastest, most efficient, and cheapest way to get your certification is just to have those things. The study guide, the practice exam questions, the membership, and then the payment of the exam and your three books. And then a few markers and pens and highlighters. <laughs> I like AAPCs because you get two attempts. With CCS, you only get one attempt, and then you got to buy the exam again. So that's my only hesitation with AHEMA, is just because of that. Employers do utilize CCS, but you're going to find just as many jobs with CPC as you are with CCS. They're interchangeable. If a an employer is looking for either one. They have both of them posted on their ad. You can do your own research on Indeed. Look in your area, see who's hiring, and type in both and see which one is more valuable. But I love, love the two attempts for the one price. Lynn, thanks for joining. Hey, Janice, thanks for the follow. Yana, thanks for the follow. Kelly, thanks for the roses, go-kart, and anointed, and Jess, Doris, Tasha, Tammy. Thank you guys for sharing the lives and tapping the screen. 
We got B's and D's. Where is the appendix? Does anybody know? D was correct. If you go look at the back of your CPT book around page 783 to 784, you'll find that appendix in the back of the book that correlates with the left-hand side of every single one of your CPT pages. At the very bottom, you've got this um, map grid thing that shows you what telemedicine little prompt is, it's a little key, what the audio only, what add-on codes are, what FDA um, approval pending, uh, rotary sequence code looks like. They also have the circle with the line through it that has the modifier 51 exemption on it. The left hand side of every page of your book has that key down below. Also, in the back of your CPT book, there is a full list of every single one of the codes that is 51 modifier exempt listed on one page that you can run to when you get asked this question and then you can just skim and pick the correct answer out of these four with that one page. That way you're not having to run from code to code to code. Thanks, Anointed, for sharing the live, girl. She's spamming TikTok. All right. It says 783 to 784. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? We have some more 13s, 14s, 17, and 11s. If it's a CPT book, it's the correct book. You just need to learn how to utilize it. It is called Appendix E as an elephant. Go look for Appendix E. You have a table of contents in the front of your book. In my 2024 book, it's on page 986. And, some, and I'm telling you, a lot of times, Pocket Prep gets these page numbers wrong. They said it was 700. I bet it was 980 something, whatever. They sometimes get their sevens and nines confused when they're 10 keying these. So they probably meant to say 900 instead of 700. Just more little human errors. You're welcome. We're doing a punch biopsy and a shaved biopsy. The answer will be an integumentary on a chart. There's a handy dandy chart in integumentary that lists all these procedures out, gives you several examples and we'll tell you specifically what the answer is based off multiple combinations of codes depending on what you did. I 
max A. Let's see. Good job. Perfect. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? Mmm, hernia repairs. Those codes have updated since 2023. We have a new set of hernia codes. I'm hoping they have this question correct. It's good practice to audit this. I'm going to work on my E&M document for just a second while y'all work on that one. Let me know what you think the answer is for it in chat. We got C's, B's, and A's. What's your differences in your hernias, guys? What's the first thing you got to look up? What's your steps to doing hernias? They're categorized by what type, right? First, are we inguinal, femoral, lumbar, umph, anterior, or para? Then you have to figure out if you're initial or reoccurrent. Or if they're reductible or incarcerated or strangled is next. Are we epigastric, incisional, ventral, umbilical cord, spleen? Yep. Perfect. Good job, guys. Perfect. We got an abnormality in the breast. What did we do today? Ah. Look up your differences between these CPT codes 
then let me know when you're ready and we'll go look for those differences in the question. There are specific differences between these. Let's see. There you go. C was the answer. What about this one? Do we have any wires? We do have a wire. We do have methane blue too. So, which answer would be correct if we have wires and methane blue staining? Mm-hmm. You're welcome, Carol. Mm-hmm. D is correct. Good job. Perfect. Mm, are we in muscular skeletal or are we in the back in maybe the nervous section or are we doing combos of both and which one would go first? Would we have 51 modifiers or would we times two stuff? What's allowed with which codes? First thing, figure out if you are in 63075 area or should you be in the 22551 <laughs> Your AAPC instructor is misinformed and spreading misinformation. Unless <clears throat> you are taking your AAPC exam outside of the United States, like in Indonesia, Bali, some of those countries, they are not allowed to bring their own books to the testing center due to exam cheating and people are given blank books on exam day to use. But if you've purchased an a, 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 a CPT code book, an ICD-10 book, it's your book. You paid for it. You can write in it all you want. I have legitimately won prizes from AAPC for my notes and been shipped packages from them and awards for my notes. I've taken six courses now and nine certification exams at least remotely or in person with my books and my notes written as they are and have never ever been turned away ever and I would never ever share any info with you guys that would get you guys to lose your $500 exam money 
people that just share that information that you can't have anything written in your books is just sharing misinformation. That is not true. Even their own study guides tell you to write in the book. They tell you to highlight. They tell you to move guidelines to the codes where it's affected. Even their own website says to do it. I don't know if I would pay for lessons for a teacher that would be spreading misinformation <laughs> right out the gate. Oh my gosh. That's why I like to teach for free. You know, I may not be, and I know I'm not 100% accurate all the time. I make mistakes daily. I don't want to be charging people for my mistakes, too, on top of that. But I'm just here to help. For sure. I would be traumatized if I was charging for information and then it was incorrect. That would kill my soul. <laughs> hey Miranda, thanks for the follow. Not you can use the study guides that I have um, to make notes in your CPTs or ICD-10 books, of course. You can't take them with you on exam day, but you can absolutely use them. What do you guys think the answer is? Everybody saying A? Correct. Good job, guys. Remember to do your most extensive procedure go, gets coded first and then your least troublesome or hardest codes go last. Back into Intigmatary. We got full thickness tissue and we have some retrieval of tissue going on. What code set would we be under? Awesome. I hope I can help you out, Miranda.
doesn't sound right. How much is that? That's 60 plus 33. That's only 93 minutes. I'm dealing with 104 in this rationale for some reason. Why? Everybody says C. Perfect. Good job. Mm, we got urethra stents. Would we have two CPT codes? Would we have one times? If we have two CPT codes, do we times the first one and add a modifier to the second one? These are all things that I'm thinking as I'm looking at all these answers. Thanks for sharing the live. Thanks for tapping the screen. We got 26 new followers. If I forgot to mention your name or didn't see it, I'm sorry. But I'm happy y'all are here. Hope I can help you guys out. Thanks, go car. Lots of bees. Perfect. What do you guys think about this one? Are we up in Antigmatary or are we in the back in the medicine section? We've got burns. B for this one also. Perfect. All right, we've got another bladder or something repair. Anteriorly, mm. a lot of the codes throughout the CPT book are either anterior, posterior, um, and I do two color codes for those. Everything that's anterior is blue. Everything that's posterior is green. Um, you can come up with your own color coding. A lot of things in muscular skeletal or skin, bone, or muscle, I have three different color codes for those. I just highlight things. 
in a different color code. That way, as I'm breezing over a page, I know all these codes are anterior and then all these codes are posterior or some of the codes are both anterior and posterior because they're combo codes. So I can eliminate answers quickly by just having those highlighted in different colors. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? Tara, thanks for the share. I'm glad it's helpful, Yolanda. There's a lot of codes that are allograph or autograph. I also color code those two differences. A lot of the codes are either diagnostic or therapeutic. I color code those. A lot of them are initial or subsequent or singular or simple versus complex qualitative versus quantitative. I color code those two. We've got codes for frontal, maxillary, ethmoid, splendoid. I color code those two. I even color code the headers. If it's an excision, it's orange. If it's a repair, it's blue. If it's an incision, it's yellow. If it's a destroy, it's green. If it's a debriefment, it's pink. <laughs> just lots of colors. It looks like an ADHD person just exploded on this CPT book. Hopping around from one thing to another. Everybody saying D? Perfect, good job. Which modifier would we use in this situation? Should be easy peasy. Never say never, Anna. Medical coding, Lord. Um, but in general, I've never seen an answer to a question for a CCS or a CC AAPC question where an add-on code happened to be one with a modifier. Just never have seen it. And uh, it tells you a lot of times in the guidelines not to use 50 or 51 with any add-on codes because those are the ones that you have to multiply. Um, but in general I have never seen an add-on code where the answer had the add-on code with a modifier attached to the add-on code. So it's 99.9% .9 probably accurate. But never say never in medical coding. <laughs> yes, two surgeons, easy peasy. Alright, what about this one? Endoscope with an otomy. Would we have one CPT code? Would we have three? Or would we have two? Murray, thanks for the follow. Oh, 
gosh, buy two workshops, get one free. How much are they charging for workshops now? I feel so bad when I charge $15. How much are they charging? $157? Really? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. That's crazy. by saying A. Perfect. Good job. <clears throat> mm. A lot of things inside the entire cardiovascular system set of codes is just the difference whether you are in an artery or whether you're in a vein. Are you vascular, aorta, those kind of things. So I color code those. Everything that's um, in an artery, I do with a red circle. Anything that's vein or vascular, I circle with a blue or ventricular, all that stuff. But all this seems to be artery, artery, artery. Another artery. So that's the first thing I look through when I'm looking for these things is look for am I artery or vein and that helps me eliminate a lot of answers. We did a temporal artery biopsy. Which answer do you think is correct for this one? Thanks Carol. Perfect. You guys got it. Y'all are on a roll today. What about spontaneous miscarriage? This is where I wish there was another header inside the CPT book. They could do better in presenting these codes a lot better, but um, I fixed that in my notes. But if you're doing this without the divider that I have, um, it can be a little difficult, so be careful with this one. You got to know your differences between your spontaneous or incompletes.
If I D, good job. What about gastric restrictive device? Mm. This one's adjustable. So they have surgical ones, implantable ones. Yep, lots of little tiny differences. Would we have one CPT code or two? Would we need a modifier? And what header are all these under? <laughs> hey Carrie, thanks for the follow. What do you guys think is the answer on this question? Got A's? Perfect. Good job. This one's going to combine some diagnoses with a CPT code. Oh, oh, don't start. Oh, I hate this site when it does this. Go. See that better. It gets funny sometimes. No, unhelpful. It shows up on mine like perfect, but I can't get it to show up on for you guys perfect. Don't know why. Such a pain. There we go. There we go, that's better. <laughs> it takes practice. You have to be able to turn to those codes super fast and already know what your one word differences are to highlight those codes um, in advance so that you know what to look for. Um, you grab those differences, eliminate two answers, and then move on down to the next two answers if you need to. But it takes a lot of practice. Don't read the questions first. You go straight to the answers first. Only look for the differences in those answers in the question. So if you're starting out by reading the question, you're doing it wrong for sure. You're just going to go to the different codes. We've got two answers with the same answer that have 5, 4, 8, 40 in them. I'd go to that CPT code or that diagnosis and see what's going on. Am I an N50.3 or an 8? That'll get me down to a 50-50 shot fast. So go see what those two differences are. Point 0.8 is what and a point 0.3 is what. Then go look for your diagnosis. That'll get you down to a 50-50 shot. Then you can worry about your CPT code. Perfect. 
perfect. A is correct. This looks like a moss surgery. These are my favorite. I refuse to learn these for my um, coding exam, but now they're one of my favorites to do. First thing to figure out with a moss surgery is body part. Am I an 11 or am I a 13? Go figure that out first. Then you just need to know, did I go back to the body and cut more things off? And then I need to know if anything that I ever cut off equals up to more than five without adding anything, because we don't add in Moz, then I know I need to add my last code. But the first thing to do is where are we at? There are two stages, so you know you do need to have your 14. If there's three stages, we would be answer A. If there's two stages, it would be answer C. We do have six tissue blocks in the very first stage, so you know you're going to have to add your 15 code. So which answer has your 14 and your 15 with the correct body part? So that's three codes, and that is your answer C. Perfect, guys. Good job. We got a lot of different modifiers here. Would we be a 59 modifier in these codes or a 51 or no modifier? Would we be three CPT codes or two CPT codes? What did we do today? This looks a lot like another question that we already had today, but love hernias. See you later. This is our last question for tonight. I will download this live and post it up on YouTube for everybody. I hope it's been super helpful. I hope to see you tomorrow night and on Thursday for our free live lessons. We're going to have a workshop on, third, on Sunday, so I hope you guys come hang out on Sunday. We'll be on YouTube again and... Just a busy, busy week, guys. Tomorrow we'll do practice questions on YouTube. Everybody thinks C. Perfect. Good job, guys. We've only done 45 of 250 of these questions, so we got plenty more to look over as the days go on. We'll be back here on TikTok on Wednesday night to do more practice questions and I'll do more Q&A and uh, this is the next one that's coming up. It will be for an emergency room visit. Mm, I like these questions. The differences between these codes is whether we have one or two people. So I hope to see you guys then. Yeah, two hours went by fast. I haven't gotten it up yet, Carol. I need to go post it. I'm fixing to go do that now. I need to go post that workshop up. I forgot. It's Sunday is like, what, six more days away? And y'all can't even, yeah, purchase it. So, 
Yeah, I'm going to go put that up right now so you guys can uh, have access to purchase it for Sunday. We're going to do 75 questions in surgical situations. It'll probably mostly be either all inpatient hospitalization surgery stuff. So have some E&M, of course, as always, diagnoses. It'll be about all areas, including guidelines. Um, but focusing on outpatient or hospital surgeries, for sure. You're very welcome. I do do anesthesia. I love anesthesia. Yep. We can do some anesthesia tomorrow night on uh, the YouTube Live, too. I'll prep some of those questions. I hope that's super helpful. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to skedaddle. I'll go put up that workshop, and I will see you tomorrow night on YouTube. I hope this is helpful. Thank you, Mia's. Go to medicalcodingbygen.com. It'll be under the workshop tab. You're very welcome, Ashley. You're awesome. I'm so glad I can help you guys out. Oh, I'm sorry, Ashley. We'll get you there. Don't you worry. You hang out with me, and I'll do my best to help you. Good night, Twinkle. I'll see you guys later. Aw, oh, thanks. 6.30, Arizona Time Zone, on YouTube. It's already up and posted on the YouTube channel that you could hit the Notify Me link, and it'll let you know when I hit the button to go live at your time zone. It's all free, so no worries. I'll see you guys tomorrow on YouTube. Thanks, Mari. Love y'all. Proud of y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow night.